Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter back with a build overview. Yes, we've reached the end of this build. Uh, you can tell we've reached the end because look at me, I'm looking all smart. I'm, I'm clean shaven and looking fresh and looking smiley and, you know, I'm a happy chappy. Okay, it's been a long build. It's been, you know, longer than expected, but we'll talk about that because I want to have a nice little ramble with you about the project. You know, you've followed me along and it's, I think it's nice to have a, a really good round up and talk about the challenges and what it's meant. Now, before I dive into this, if you don't know what this is, yeah, you've just come across this video, uh, this is the build overview for building this board, which is a, a D-Day themed, yeah, I think Hollywood themed, yeah, demo board for the game Bolt Action, yeah, and it's for my mate Martin and his, his war game store up in Southport in the UK in the Northwest, yeah. Uh, it's called War Games, I'll picture, yeah, and it's on Lord Street, yeah. So this, it, tomorrow it goes off to its new home, yeah, so I'll be up there playing with it, well, yeah, I'll be there playing, obviously I'm going to be there playing with it. I'm rambling, folks, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, but that's what this project is. Now, it's taken three months, yeah? Uh, Work-wise, if we want to be realistic, yeah? Uh, the project was pegged at two weeks, okay? It was a quick, supposed to be a quick and simple build to give him a, a demo board. Yeah, we went vastly over that. Uh, initially, because of problems we had moving into the studio, I'll talk about the studio in a minute, yeah? Uh, and then, by choice, yeah? Uh, me and Kez had a chat and I, I rarely get a chance to show off what I can do and really have fun with a board because I tend to pick up really quick jobs, yeah? Uh, I, I've got a bit of a reputation for, you know, big builds in short times, yeah? And as such, uh, a decision was, was sort of reached and, you know, an agreement that, yeah, take your time on it. Don't, I mean, I've taken, I have taken too long on it. Yeah, but take your time on it and do something. Show off what you can do. And I'll be honest with you guys, yeah. This is probably, the, I mean, you guys who follow along will know I, I'm rarely happy with my work when it leaves the studio. Yeah. I've got to say, overall, I am happy. There's a couple of areas, well, there's two, if, I, if I'm honest, yeah. The rock work, the foliaging, the obstacles, yeah, the general crafting of the beach, yeah, I'm really quite happy with, yeah. Uh, the colouring of the beach and the seascape in general, it's okay. Yeah, I know, I know, you know, I think it's a... I'd like to do it a lot better, yeah. If I'm perfectly honest, yeah, I've only done a couple of beaches yeah, uh, a, a long time ago, and as part of a hobby group, yeah, and sea-wise, you know, I've only done quite basic hobby seas, yeah, so these were challenges for me as well, yeah, and I'd like to take that, my standard, a lot higher, you know, with regards to, or how comfortable I am, I mean, I know you guys are probably looking at it going, it's amazing, but, you know me, I'm always pushing myself, but overall, yeah, I can say, it's a nice board, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd have loved to have spent a lot longer. I could quite easily put another month into this, quite easily. Yeah, I can raise the details up. I know that sounds crazy, but I would have loved to have put all the seaweed in and that sort of stuff. I'd have loved to put the algae dark line growth where you get with the tide coming up. Uh, I would have loved to take in the foliage a little bit further with a little bit more variation. I'd like to have weathered the, the watch of the bunkers and the buildings up a bit more. Yeah, I'd have liked to have spent more time. Get off my sea, you bit of flock. I'd like to spend a bit more time on the on the seascape. Yeah, actually, I needed to spend a bit more time on the seascape. I'll explain that, but then that's not completely finished yet. Yeah, I'll explain why in a second. Yeah, we're explaining a lot in a second, aren't we? But yeah, I could have taken this further. Yeah, I could have taken this a lot further. Yeah, because with all terrain, it's simply down to putting the time in. You know. Once you've got the basic te technique down, I mean, I'd, I'd have loved to do an algae growth over the rocks. I was even thinking of sculpting some scrap, some crabs and a couple of seagulls to, to sort of like nudge away in a couple of ledges and stuff like that. You know, it's so much you could do. I mean, you could take, at the end of the day, you can take this to real. 
you know, you can spend that much time on it. But a line has been drawn, dice need to be rolled on it, dice have been rolled on it, yeah? That's why this is another momentous one. Uh, anyway, dice have been rolled on it and it is, I'm declaring it pretty much done. Yeah, because you've got to go. And I am happy, you know, I'm happy to put this out and I'm not worried and I'm a happy man. And I'm sitting down, which is always a bonus. Yeah, I like this sitting down malarkey, I'm not used to it. So, uh, right, talk about the studio. Now obviously this has been uh, a bit, a bit of an adventure. Yeah, those following the channel will know why you know, I struggled just after what just before Christmas, you know, uh, and then it was like a, a turn of good fortune across the board. I really appreciate all the financial support from my patrons, guys. <sighs> yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, and a couple of lucky opportunities, you know, th this studio, this common working area, and I'll do a video on it, and make, take you around and do a proper tour and show you. Yeah. We started out in their main workshops and it was just too cold and that really slowed the project down. That put about another week, possibly two weeks, on the initial build, yeah? Now I should say, when I'm talking about weeks, yeah, you gotta remember, I am not a full-time terrain builder, okay? I work nights in a warehouse, in a refrigerated warehouse, picking and packing pallets off, off you know, out of arctics and off shelves and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's not nice work, but it pays the bills and it puts food on, on, the, on the table. And then with my spare time in the day when I'm not being a dad, yeah, basically I come here and do terrain. So when I talk about weeks, for every week I, we're realistically probably talking about two and a half days. So if I look at this as a build overall, I'd probably say there's about five weeks work in it. Okay? Uh, but obviously because life, also doing the tutorials, the channel, the comments, the video editing, yeah, being a dad, being a husband, yeah, to a, to a wife who's going through her end of year exams at the second year of her degree in a very stressful time, you get the picture, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, so right, what we're talking, time or studio, studio, I mean, and then what, I was out there and then we moved it into this live, lovely little room. Now, it's a bit bleak and white and not particularly pretty. Okay, I've got some posters there going up. It's the size of the room, if you're interested, is 15 foot by 10 foot. And the reason I measured it is, once this goes, on Monday I'm, I've got more projects coming in. We've got the art board coming in and I've got another project coming in. Yeah, but I'm also moving my, a desk in here and some proper, because I've been working out cardboard boxes and that sort of thing. So, that's how I know it, how big it is. But it's been a big leap for me to be able to have a place to leave. I couldn't have done this at home realistically, I just couldn't. Yeah, there's no way my marriage would have survived the time it's taken to build it. Yeah, so I'm eternally grateful to the guys over at B Arts for that. Yeah, that's the people who run this place. Yeah, so if you do happen to be watching this, guys, thanks, really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to doing some pretty more great creations here. We've got lots of good stuff coming. Yeah, and possibility of live studio days, but I'm working that out. Anyway, right, so the build itself. Right, when we started it, yeah, and I'm gonna be throwing pictures up here, yeah. When we started it, uh, it was a simple build, and it was very much what I'd call a cove, you know, and it was symmetrical, and it was horrible by the time I'd finished carving the basic shape and everything. And then we just had one of those, right, no, throw it out, don't like it, not having it, this is, um, this is not the board I want to build. Yeah, and we've, you know, we essentially, we added those clusters here, these rocks here, we, we, we added this outgrowth here, you know, we, we put in this ramp here, over there we, we put the sort of, uh, the plateau effect to sort of even it off, okay, and immediately we changed the dynamics of the board. Now you've got to remember this is also a modular board, yeah, so it could be arranged uh, as Commando Cove, yeah, it can be arranged as Bunker Point North or Bunker Point South. Yeah, or the standard beach. Okay. Uh, and so, a lot of figuring, a lot of change around, but overall, that choice to re... I mean, it put a lot of work into it, and it put a lot of work going more forward because there was a lot more rock work to do than a simple, you know, little sort of edge all the way around. So, you know, decision was made, 
a lot more work involved, but well worth it, I think. Well, 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 well worth it. Yeah, uh, we had some challenges. We did the craters, and when we did the craters, we used a heat gun, okay? And as part of that process, it worked really well. You know, we got some really great craters, you know. It worked well on the expanded polystyrene. It worked well on the high-density stuff. And we built the edges up with filler. Yeah, and I covered them over with grit and that sort of stuff. But we did have a bit of a problem. I was trying to make the board modular and get craters to go across the edges, okay, and, and to match that modularity, and I really shouldn't have. Yeah, because what happened was, as I was blowing hot air down, it sort of run along the, between the edges, and it melted them back, and that caused a whole nightmare. Yeah, first we tried to fill it, yeah, you know, and I say we, I, yeah. I tried to fill it and, and, you know, get it back to straight, but with it being out in the cold, it was a nightmare. And in the end, the easiest thing to do was just to cut new, two new edges, cut the ruin bit out, replace them and just blend them in. Yeah, and it worked beautifully. Yeah, I mean, you can't even tell. Yeah, that that's what we did. So, yeah, when you make these mistakes, don't worry about them. You know, you can fix them, yeah? Sometimes you've got to step back and, and, and look at it and just go, what's the, the quickest and easiest way of getting the sharp professional edge? You know what I mean? Or getting this to where I want it. Yeah, and sometimes the, what you think is the easiest fix with a bit of filler actually becomes the nightmare. Yeah, and the more complicated one of cutting the thing out and starting again and, and putting a new piece in and shaping it in and blending it in, it's actually the simple one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so when you, when you get problems like that with your boards, Okay, don't be afraid to step back, look at a couple of options, and the complicated one might not always be the complicated one. You know what I mean? Yeah, but above all, yeah, these sort of cock-ups are fixable. Yeah, take that away from it. So, you know, we got it basically constructed out of there, then we brought it into here, yeah, and we gritted it up, yeah. Uh, the integration of all the, all the watch, the Mantics, uh, not the Mantic, the Warlords. Why did I say Mantic? The warlord, sorry, warlord, <laughs> yeah. All the, all the watcher, the the warlord and warlord have been great. They've given it loads of publicity and shared it out and that sort of stuff. And I know it's a demo table for bolt action, but they didn't have to, yeah. But you know they were really good. I mean, I think they knit the bunkers, yeah, from John Stellar's personal collection because they had not, and for about a week they had not, yeah. Then Rich was really like, I found some, you know what I mean. And I think that he nicked him from John Stellard's house, to be perfectly honest. So, if you're watching, John, yeah, thanks for the bunkers, dude. Come on, they've gone to a worthy cause, you know what I mean? Yeah, helping people play bar action, getting kids playing on something that, you know, is going to engage them. And that's, yeah, this is designed to be played on. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so thank you, John. Thank you very much. And thank you, Warlord. They supplied the, what should the Atlantic Wall bunkers. They supplied the uh, sandbag emplacements. The, the Ruin Farmhouse Hamlet, all the, all the, what you call it, the anti-tank obstacles and the barbed wire, yeah. The only defences that Warlord didn't, well, Warlord did supply them because they came from Warlord, yeah, but they're actually foreground, yeah, uh, were these, okay, were anti-troops, you know, barricades. I'm losing my words today, aren't I? Yeah, but all it was, with those, okay, and they came for, from what you call it, from a foreground. And we had a couple of sets of those, yeah, and we used most of them, and then the ones we didn't use, we sort of turned into these, yeah. No, those, those were a laugh, weren't they? Yeah, those were the, those were the, the finish it up, I've done the beach! All the anti-tank obstacles are on, the right, on, and then you get the little comments, dude, you put your anti-landing craft defences the wrong way round. They were sloped upwards the beach, not down to... Oh. So. And believe it or not, yeah, that put four days onto the build. Yeah? Because we had to basically break them back off, clean them up, okay, put them back down, put a new sort of, the, they were blended in with a mixture of grit and acrylic and a bit of PVA, it's like a slop, you had to blend into and fix them down. So that had to go down, it then had to be blended in with the edges again, yeah, because it was a different sort of concentration, yeah, so, little areas can really stock up on time, you know what I mean, yeah, 
I'm always learning. So that was a challenge, that was a challenge. The other obstacles went down great. The dragon's teeth at the back, in hindsight, yeah, it's got sort of a, a bit of a, a funky wavy line to it, yeah, and aesthetically it would have been more pleasing to do a long smoother line, yeah. The problem was that I actually wanted to bring a bit of space forward, yeah, behind the, the obstacle, the, those anti-tanks, so that uh, defending players could bring tanks on yeah, but you couldn't get that situation where you get the recce vehicle charging from the back line down to the front, shooting and then wrecking back again. Yeah, because I hate that rule in bolt action. I hate when it does that. And it would have been completely unrealistic on a D-Day board sort of, on a, you know, on this sort of setting. So that's why, you know, the tank traps in it's been designed essentially to say, yeah, you can bring tanks up and tanks can pretty much move quite far up the board. Yeah. Uh, and tanks from the other side can come quite down far the board. But, yeah, never the twain shall meet. You know, there's no crossing over. Yeah, and that was important for me because I didn't want that wrecking vehicles going up and down it. Okay, so, big thank you to Warlord for all the obstacles. Yeah, really, really pleased with that. I think, yeah, yeah, there's about £200 worth of obstacles on here if it's all added up. Yeah. Materials wise for the whole build, uh, I worked it out, it's £230, yeah, plus £200 worth of obstacles from Warlord. Yeah, so thanks, thanks and thanks. Yeah, much appreciated because you saved me having to build them. <laughs> yeah, and they do look really good, they really do. They've worked really, really, really well. Yeah. Okay, so we painted it up, yeah, we did the earth textures, you know. Now, with regards to doing, actually painting it up and the rock textures, yeah, building and applying all the rocks and that sort of stuff, we did in the Rocky Rock Face video, yeah. So, if you want to know how I did it, everything's in there, yeah. Now, with regard to actually painting it up, I used uh, my acrylic stippling with uh, washes technique. Uh, a little bit heavier duty with a larger sponge and a larger a wash brush, but essentially exactly the same technique. And I've covered that technique in this video. So if you're wondering how I did the rocks, how I painted the rocks up, that's how I did those. Okay? Now, uh, once all the rocks were done and we got the earth textures down, yeah, the beach was simple. Uh, the beach was a simple base coat of... Where is it? One sec. Of that okay and that's all it was just one coat of that and then it was weathered with a Grax earth shade I had a couple of pots spare yeah so I just put that through the airbrush to weather it and that is all I've done on the beach okay so if you look at the beach and wonder how I got it yeah one beige airbrush with a Grax earth shade yeah I should have knocked up my own acrylic inks and I've got some on order typical me yeah, it would have been cheaper in the long run. I think I probably spent about ten pound. Yeah, because I also used the Agrax to sort of shade the mud and that sort of stuff when with the flocking. Yeah, so about ten pound on Agrax. Yeah, I should have bought some acrylic inks. Yeah, I've got some on order. Yeah, you can do it with acrylic inks. Yeah, the videos, the the, the washes, they're in the back to basics play. How to make the washes, they're in the back to basics playlist. But I don't mind that. But that's all the beach is. Yeah. So if you look at the beach and go, oh my god, yeah, dude, it's Mel, you know what I mean? Yeah, so the beach is done like that. Uh, the sea, now the sea, I've got a little problem with the sea. The sea isn't actually finished because the heating gets switched off in here at night. Okay, the waves haven't completely cured. They still need to cure just a little bit more, another day or two. I know, I know. They're hard enough to play on, they're hard enough to rest you. I've played on them, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, so this is the sort of, the let down bit of the project where I'm sort of letting Martin down a little. Yeah, but I don't mind. One, they look great. Two, I know that it's just a matter of them curing and this way you can see it a little bit lighter, that'll go as dark as what the rest of the ocean, which will be, you know, all well, almost as dark, a little bit more translucent and it'll look brilliant, okay? Uh, and so I don't mind letting Martin down because I know technically, yeah, it's right, it's just drying, but the fact that it's drying, yeah, doesn't stop it being played on. 
yeah. I'd recommend don't put anything heavy on it, you know. Uh, the, the thing that needs to be done is it needs just one simple gloss coat over it, a nice good gloss coat just to seal it all over up to where the white's gone on. Yeah, and the white is just dry brushed. It's just, I stippled the edges and I've just dry brushed it with white, acrylic white to get that proper technique. How I've done the scene, everything like that, uh, that's coming in a video. It will be in the Water Features playlist probably in the next day or two. Ideally, I want to wait until it's fully cured and Martin sends me some final pictures before I finish the video. Now, this does mean that Martin's got a bit of work, but Martin, yeah, yeah, he runs a war game store. Well, he runs a gaming store because they do all sorts of gaming there, card gaming, board gaming, yeah. He may run that store, yeah, but much like me, he's a long tooth veteran of the hobby. You know what I mean? He's been in it for donkey's years. Yeah, and all this needs is a gloss coat. Yeah, so I know it's well within Martin's ability. I know it's gonna take him 10 minutes. Yeah, one, one sort of lazy afternoon when the store's quiet. Yeah, so I'm not overly concerned. You know, if I was going to let the guy down, I mean, if I was perfectly honest, if I, if I if I was to tell, I haven't told him yet. <laughs> I don't know what to tell him. <laughs> I don't know if he'll watch this video. Yeah, always spotting bits coming at you. I don't know if he'll watch this video before it turns up. Yeah, so if he does, he knows. And if he doesn't, I'll tell him when it turns up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, of all, I know if I, you know, if I turn around to Martin and say, look, I want to bring it up next week you know, in the, in the week, yeah, he would be absolutely fine with that, you know, Mark's been absolutely brilliant on this, yeah, but it's, it's okay, and I know Mark can finish it, you know what I mean, I'm 100% happy and leaving it in his hands to just put a gloss coat over, yeah, and no doubt if he does knacker it up, yeah, I'm not saying he will, but my plan is at some point I will revisit it up at the store and just take it up another level, yeah, to be truthful, once I've, yeah, and I'm, this is a little gift for Martin. I mean, I know I've got OTT on the board as it is, but yeah, I think Martin's always wanted one of those full glossy resin ones, you know what I mean? So what I'll say is once I've finally got my head round, yeah, how to do the full on beach effects, because I'm learning, you know, I share everything I learn with you guys, but I am learning guys, you know what I mean? I don't know everything, <laughs> not until I've learned it. <laughs> That's the plan anyway, yeah, but anyway, once I've got it down and I can do it really nice, yeah, I'll revisit the board. We'll take this C off, yeah, and we'll put a really nice resin one in. Yeah, but that's in a year or so, you know what I mean? Yeah, so with the C, that's why I'm not 100% happy with it, guys. You know, I've not done lots of C work, yeah. I would have been a lot happier with it if it had been fully cured, yeah. It's sort of the one unfinished bit, you know what I mean? But hey-ho, it's still spanking, you know, and it does look good, you know. It really does. So, on to the flocking. Yes, because we talked about the sea, haven't we? We talked about the rocks, and we talked about building the rocks. Right, when it came to putting the flock down, yeah, I use my Jarvis Scenics. I do like my Jarvis Scenics, yeah. Now, there's been a few comments asking why there's no static grass on the board, okay? And that, that was a conscious decision. Of, of all the flocks to put down on a board, static grass is the most fragile. Okay, now in this situation, yeah, I can apply static grass in two ways. I can apply it in broad fields, large patches, yeah, which is fine, it looks great, or I can apply it in lots of tufts. Now, this setup, yeah, doesn't suit the large fields sort of static grass, yeah, and that's the most hard wearing of ways of applying it. When you play down a nice large level and you, you know, get a good LP on, yeah, you give it a good seal, yeah, it's, it's solid, it'll last for a while. This hasn't got lots of large grassy open, you know, I've been specific to break it up a lot and I'll explain why in a minute, yeah. And so that technique doesn't really suit and what I'd end up with doing if I went with the static grass is lots of little patches and tufts. And for a demo board in a store, yeah, that's okay. I keep spotting things. But for a demo board in a store, yeah, you know, people who play in stores don't treat their terrain like they, they treat them in the club or like they treat them in, I what you call it, in, you know, their own terrain, yeah? And so, 
little clumps, they get damaged, they get broken off. And when they get break in, broken off, the, the glue that holds them down would break the baseboard as well. You know what I mean? And reveal the, the under texture of whatever's under it, whether it's, you know, it breaks off at the flock level, the painted level, the grit level, or straight down to the raw material. You know, it depends, you know, what they've pushed over the clump. Okay? And so I, I made a conscious decision of basically no static grass on it. Yeah, simple as because it that's functionality. Above all, this is a gaming board. You know, for no matter how beautiful I want to make it look, yeah, this is a gaming board and it's gotta last and it's gotta be fit for purpose. Yeah. And um, for that mind, yeah, talking about well before we get finished that we'll just finish the flocking. See there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. With that in mind, yeah. With the flocking, we did that, our two-tone effect, and really nice and durable. Yeah, now, for if you're wondering how I got that effect, yeah, is, yeah, there's the tutorial, that's how I did it, that's everything I know on flocking. <laughs> yeah. After that, yeah, it was a matter of adding clump foliage. Now, when you look at it, yeah, you'll notice that the clump foliage, uh, specifically the flowers, yeah, there's a very even distribution of flowers across the board. I'll be honest with you, I've tried to keep the more red ones towards the lower end and, and the more yellowy white ones towards the higher ground, but there is still an even distribution of flowers across the board. And, and a lot of the places, whereas the club foliage is placed next to rocks mainly and in corners, yeah, okay, uh, with the, the flowers, they've all been pretty much placed quite open out, you know what I mean, yeah? And there's a reason for this, okay? One, it's not the most realistic method of doing it. It isn't, it's as simple as that, okay? Uh, the reason it's done, yeah, is because when you add flowers to a board, okay, it, what you call it, it gives the impression that it's delicate, that's the feeling people get. And what people stop doing is putting their hands on the board. People will happily put their hands on a piece of grass, a static grass, even bits with clump foliage on. But you put flowers on there, and you watch them, they'll keep their hands off that board. They won't rest their hands off that board. And it's a little bit of uh, terrain artisan social engineering. Okay, It's designing the board in a way that to, to discourage yeah, people from putting their grubby paws on it and their greasy paws on it and, and to help Martin keep it looking good for as long as possible. It is going to take wear and tear, that's the nature of all terrain. It's been heavily sealed, it's been heavily varnished. Yeah, once this is varnished, this will be heavily varnished and it's been designed for gameplay. Yeah, but they do take damage. But what I've done is I've included lots of things to sort of discourage people abusing the table and resting things, th things on the table. So if we look at the table, it's not just the flowers. Remember when I said we, we were talking about the obstacles and the reason there's no big great areas? Yeah, look at all the sharp obstacles on the beach. Yeah, that sort of discourage you from putting your hands down. Yeah, even the waves themselves have been stippled in such a way that they look spiky, okay? Areas where there are large areas, yeah, have been filled with craters. So they're not flat and even, you know, they're not somewhere where you would comfortably rest your hand and put your weight, okay? And these are all design techniques, yeah? And they're all social engineering to stop people getting their greasy paws on my table. I don't mind people playing on the table, that's what I built it for. That's what makes me happy. But what I don't want, yeah, is someone with, you know, Sticky fingers, yeah, leaning, putting their weight on it, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so a little bit of social engineering there. You know, if you are building a board to that's going to get a lot of use, yeah, in a public setting, and you want it to last, cover it with sharp bits, and people will keep their hands off it. Sharp and delicate. It's a bit like my willow, isn't it? <laughs> So, that, okay, that, that's a, it's alright, I've got a little bit off topic, I'm just trying to bring myself around and think what we've covered with this build overview. We've pretty
pretty much talked about how we've built it and the challenges. I've still got a little bit of tidying up to do and, you know, I've got a couple of hours in the studio, you know, I came in mainly just to, to basically just last couple of touch-ups and to film this. Yeah, so it's a lazy afternoon for me. And what I'm going to do is just spend as much time as I can just touching it up and seeing if I can make it just a little bit prettier. Yeah. Uh, uh, with regards to how I painted all the obstacles and all the uh, the ruined hamlets, how I uh, not the bunkers. Yeah, the bunkers were done exactly the same way as the rocks were, so exactly the same technique. Exactly the same technique. I did them at the same time as I did the rocks. Yeah, with the same materials. I just carried on. I just treated them as rocks. Yeah. But with regards to all the uh, field defences, the barbed wire, the hamlet. Yeah, there's a video I did on that. Yeah, so if you want to know how I did those, that's up there. Uh, the flowers, mixture there. Uh, all the all the white and yellow flowers was one pack. Just one pack. I did them with one pack of army painter. <laughs> I think about three quid. And then the red flowers, they're, they're the ones I made with the... The flock box from warpainter.net. Yeah, really good bit of kit. Cost-wise in those, to do the board, I'd probably say about 20p, yeah? Uh, I, want, I, I had a load of strips there, and I just thought, you know, I'll make these into flowers and, and, and do that sort of thing, yeah? Uh, what else do I need to show you? Uh, the trenches, they were just simply corrugated cardboard, uh, cocktail sticks, yeah? And what you call it? Uh, the sandbags were... Millie put, yeah, simple as. The actual carving, I should actually go back and give out the guy, the guys at Hot Wire Foam Factory. The carving was all done with hot wire tools. We're jumping back to the start, aren't we? Yeah, but yeah, I, for this project, I managed to get my hands on one that. If you follow my videos, you, you know you'll know this. But I got the hot wire router. Holy Hannah, you know what I mean? Carving out the gaps for these bunkers and the trenches, really nice, really, really nice. Uh, yeah. So overall, yeah, I think we've covered how we did it, how we've done it. It's been a good build. It's been a challenging build. It's run over financially. Now, this was supposed to be a two-week project at MAPES rates. Yeah, I was working this out and it's shocking. This shows you my passion, okay, for terrain. Yeah, I'm, I am most definitely not in this for the money. Right, it was a two-week project, yeah, at mate's rates, yeah, I'm not going to tell you how much, but when you factor in the materials, which we know is about 230, which we said, yeah, and now I didn't pay for the, you know, Warlord donated the, the obstacles because it's a demo board for bolt action in a, in a store, so they were good about that, yeah, so we can factor that off, yeah, so 230 quid for materials. Now, any of you know who've been following along, yeah, I pay £90 a month for this studio space, okay? And because I've been ill and because, not because, I mean, like I say, if I'd, if I'd hammered this, we're probably talking about five weeks, yeah? But because it has dragged out, it's been about three months, so if you factor that in as well. And then if you factor in, there's been lots of little journeys backwards and forwards from home to the studio, in fact, that cost in. Yeah, and then you look at how many days, even though they've been short days, I'll be honest, I'm not talking their full days, yeah, but how many days? For every day I've visited the studio, and I'm not saying the full eight hour days, you know, you know, if we average out a four hour day, but I don't think my daily rate has even reached double figures. No, genuinely. I don't think I have. But it's beautiful. Yeah, and like I said at the start, you know, it is shocking when you work out like that, but I didn't do this for the money. I wanted to give Mar a beautiful board. I wanted to stretch my wings and I wanted to show you guys what it's capable. Yeah? Next time I get a commission, no more, two, no more quick two week mate rates jobs, that's for sure. Yeah? The irony is, I'm doing another commission, I reckon by the time I finish that commission, and that's a different story. And it's also, I, I'm not bitching about it, yeah, because I'm perfectly happy with that one because it's for Paul. 
Yeah, Paul's a damn good bloke and he's helped me out loads. Yeah, but in all honesty, yeah, if we look at the actual commission, because I'll talk about it another time. Yeah, I'll talk about it on that one. Yeah, but anyway, on this, yeah, m making money off it, pff, bugger off. <laughs> really, <laughs> bugger off. Yeah. If I turn around and I'm honest and I say, okay, right, let's look at what I have got out of it. I've got some cracking tutorials out of it. And, you know, my patrons, you guys who support me, you know, and, you know, who support based on, you know, the, the educational content, just like this, this talky, yeah. So I have, you know, I'm, I'm not horrifically out of pocket because you guys have been supporting me through that as well. Yeah, and listen, you know, patron thing is really appreciated, guys. I always say that, but it really is, trust me, you know, especially when you get to work out that, you know, do you know what, if you have dinner, you, you know, if I, if I have dinner while I'm here, I'm, yeah. if I have dinner and I buy a packet of cigarettes, basically, yeah, I owe, I owe the terrain company, I, I owe the terrain tutor, <laughs> you know what I mean, in the canyon, <laughs> I ain't taking any wages home that day. <laughs> but if I am honest, yeah, it's a beautiful piece, I've been able to show loads of things off and you know, if I want to be a bit commercial about it, you know, and I don't, you know, you know me, I do my level best not to be commercial about these things. But if I want to be a bit commercial about it, as a feature board to get out there and put out there and show what I'm capable of, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's done, you know, that I think I totaled up the likes it's got on the Bolt Action Group on Facebook. And across probably about seven posts, it's got just shy of 2,000 likes. And that's before I post the final pictures. You know, uh, it was featured in the Beasts of War community pics. I'm quite curious to see if it goes on the weekend of this weekend, to be tr truthful. I don't know if it will. It'd be great if it does. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, the irony is, yeah, they won't have had the latest pics because they film it in the week, don't they? Yeah. It's been featured on Beasts of War. Yeah. Uh, the acclaim people are giving it, do you know what I mean? People in the industry have contacted me on the quiet, you know, actual people who work for companies and that sort of stuff, yeah? And not just that, from my fellow terrain builders, yeah? Uh, big, uh, there's a couple of you out there, yeah, who've stuck with me through this project and been very clear and vocal about, you know, how well I've done with the project and what you think about it, yeah? Thanks guys, you know, as a terrain builder and also, you know, to, you know, to one guy in particular, okay, who is technically my competition, yeah, he, he put it aside to be a terrain builder, yeah, and for that, sir, you will always have my undying respect and even though it's a beautiful board, I still don't think it's up to your standards, mate, but... I'm chasing your tail, I'm chasing your tail. No, don't worry, don't worry mate. There's plenty of work about and you know, that's a bit of an awkward, you know what I mean. Right, I'm gonna to have to close that conversation. It gets a bit awkward, doesn't it? But to, to, the, to essentially my competitor, yeah, yeah. Thank you and genuinely, yeah, I look up to your work bud, it's fantastic stuff. Gotta love battle boards. Moving on. So where, where are we going to move on to from there? Yeah, the the love. I think I've blown away a few of my family as well. To be perfectly honest, I think they've they've really didn't realise that you know that Mel could do this sort of stuff. I'm curious to be truthful. I'm curious to see what I can do if I really spend the time in it. I might pick a two by two and just see exactly how far I can push it. But that's future projects. Hey, we're talking about future projects, aren't we? We must be rounded up. So to run through, okay? And money-wise, bugger all. Passion for terrain-wise. Everything. And I've gamed on it. Check this. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I mean? It's, it's what it was made for. I don't know, I lost. I lost. Yeah, but, oh, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm so looking forward to gaming on it. So, I'll be honest with you, there are areas that let, right, a couple of little things, you know, there's areas that let me down, there's, there's, there's the odd gap in between the rocks where, you know, you might be able to, if you, if you peek in, you might be able to see things. If Martin's really concerned about that, a little bit of wash in there. Yeah, I might, I'm going to pot around and do that as I do, but, you know, there's so many rocks and gaps and, you know, it's one of those things that if you really want to go looking for problems and faults, you'll find them, yeah? But, if you're happy to just play on it, then you're going to have a great time. Or it's my hope that you're going to have a great time. Right. I think we should wind this up. So there you have it, guys. That's all the tutorials, that's the techniques. Remember, there's an entire, if you haven't followed this, this project along, there's an entire build series of 8 vlogs. Yeah, and this video, making it nine, what you call it, to sort of follow the entire progress of the build. Yeah, talking about the ups and the downs and the challenges. You know, watching it evolve. Uh, coming up at the end of this video is, well, after I finish talking, is a bit of music and essentially near on 300 photos, yeah, of the build progress so you can follow it all the way through. To the very end yeah so i'll leave you with that don't feel like you have to watch it but you know if you want to yeah it's there yeah listen what i'm going to say yeah is on this one i normally turn around and i shout out for advice and all that sort of stuff yeah but on this video yeah i'm not going to ask people for for what you call it constructive criticism yeah i just want you to draw a line under it and i'm going to draw a line under it because I really want to perceive this one. I know there's faults in it, yeah, and I know there's things I could have done better, but I really want to perceive this as, ah, damn, you know what I mean? Yeah? If you've got any questions, fire them away. I'm always answering my questions. And listen, if you've enjoyed this sort of me taking you along on this project and sharing the ups and downs and the honesty about terrain building, and, and you know, I have shared everything I know to take you to build this board, you know? All the secrets are there, you know, and I'm doing myself a disservice commercially, yeah? Why am I doing that? Because to be truthful, I don't want to be a commissioned terrain builder, yeah? I want to be a terrain teacher, yeah? That's what I want to do for a full-time job. I want to get out of that bloody warehouse from freezing my hands, yeah? And I want to spend time in, you know, a little studio with my cameras, just building whatever and showing you guys. But I can only make that dream come true, yeah, with your help. So, guys, if you've loved it, you like the idea of it, and all that you want to help, you know, a starving artist, a starving artisan, if you don't mind, yeah, consider the patron thing, yeah. Take the $1 pledge, yeah. Less than a cup of coffee a month, yeah. Really helps, guys. It really does. And, you know... It, I can only get better and show you more and better things. So, you know, a bit of support. Help me help the community, guys. And help me get out of that warehouse and do my dream, mate. Yeah. Right, that about winds it up. So, I will be probably seeing you on the Sunday nighter to tell you about my jolly in Southport. So, uh, I will see you Sunday night, 9 o'clock UK time, every Sunday. So, it doesn't matter when you're watching this. Yeah. Uh, come along for the live chat and come and have a natter. In the meantime... Here's some pretty music and the work in progress picks. Oh, hot wire. And I'll, I'll carry on touching it up. See you later, guys. Ta da.